Welcome to this lecture on error bars. In this lectures, we are going to learn about different types of error bars that are used. Some researchers are often unsure how error bars should be used and interpreted. So, what I will do in this lecture, we, I will discuss some basic features of the error bars and I will tell you how these error bars can help you to communicate data and can help you in having the correct interpretation about the data. Error bars may show confidence interval, standard error, standard deviation or they may be some other quantities too and therefore, it is very important to remember what type of error bar you are using. Therefore, it is very important to remember that different type of error bars give you quite different information and therefore, you should always mention in the figure legend what type of error bar you are using in your figures. Now, let us talk about the type of error bars. Error bars if used properly either they give you information describing the data and they are called descriptive error bars or they give you information about what conclusions or inferences are justified and those error bars are called inferential error bars. Now, let us talk about descriptive error bars. Range and standard deviations are descriptive error bars because they show how the data is spread. Range error bar in encompasses the lowest and highest values of the data and standard deviation roughly gives you the average or typical difference between the data points and their mean. The standard deviation and range error bars are shown in this figure for n is equal to 5 and you can see that the range is the difference between the minimum and maximum data point. Similarly, it is shown for a sample size of n is equal to 10 and again range is the difference between the maximum and minimum data data point and n is equal to 30 and again the range is the difference between the maximum and minimum data point yeah, and you can see that the standard deviation gives you the typical or average difference between the mean and the data points. The important thing to remember here is that as you are changing the sample size from n is equal to 5 to n is equal to 10 to n is equal to 30, your range error bar is increasing. However, your standard deviation error bar more or less remains constant. Important thing about the standard deviation is that about two third of data points lie within the mean and plus minus one standard deviation region and roughly 95 percent of data points will be within mean and plus minus two standard deviation. The other important thing to remember is that mean of your result will tend closer and closer to the true mean as you increase the size of your sample or you repeat your experiments more time. Therefore, you can use the mean as your best estimate of your unknown true value. Similarly, if you repeat an experiment more and more times, the standard deviation of your experimental result will tend more and more closer to the approximate true standard deviation that you would get if your experiments were performed an infinite number of times. It is also very important to remember that the standard deviation of your experimental result will be approximately equal to the true standard deviation sigma and it does not matter whether your sample size n is large or small. Now, let us talk about inferential error bars. In biology and in some other fields, it is very common to compare samples from two groups to see if they are different. Example, in biology, it is very common to compare wild type and mutant mice or an experimental result with a control and therefore, to make inferences from the data or to make judgment whether the results are significantly different or whether the differences in the results are due to random fluctuations or chances a different type of error bar can be used and that is called inferential error bar. Now, let us talk about inferential error bars. The inferential error bars which are generally used are standard error or standard error of the mean denoted by SE or SEM or they can be confidence interval denoted by CI or 95 percent CI. So, 95 percent confidence interval is the more commonly used confidence interval and it is important to remember that the mean of the data with standard error or confidence interval error bar gives you the indication of the reason where you expect the mean of the whole possible set of results to lie and therefore, this region defines the values that are most plausible for mu or the true value of the quantity. 
the standard error and confidence interval are shown for a set of 5 data points n is equal to 5 in this graph, n is equal to 10 that means 10 data points and n is equal to 30 data points. And you can clearly see that as you are increasing your sample size from n is equal to 5 to n is equal to 10 to n is equal to 30, your standard error bar is decreasing as you are increasing the sample size and similarly your confidence interval is decreasing too. This is the summary of the lecture on error bars. The take home messages are following that the error bars can be of two types. The error bars can be descriptive error bars or they can be inferential error bars. The range and the standard deviations are called descriptive error bars because they give you the idea about the spread of the data and standard error and confidence interval are called inferential error bar because they help you to draw the conclusions from the data. Range is a descriptive error bar and it is the amount of the spread between the extremes of the data and the way to calculate the range is that you subtract the lowest data point from the highest data point. The standard deviation is a descriptive error bar and it is, this is a typical or roughly speaking the difference between the data points and their mean. The formula to calculate the standard deviation is given on this slide which is under root summation of the square of the differences of each data point from the mean divided by total sample size n minus 1. The standard error bar is an inferential error bar and it is a measure of how variable the mean will be if you repeat the whole study many times and standard error can be calculated by using the standard deviation. You divide the standard deviation by the under root of the sample size n. The confidence interval or more commonly used 95 percent confidence interval is an inferential error bar. This gives you a range of values that you can be 95 percent confident that it contains the true mean and the formula to calculate it is mean plus minus t n minus 1 multiplied by the standard error where t n minus 1 is a critical value of t and if your sample size n is 10 or more the 95 percent confidence interval is approximately mean plus minus to standard deviation. I would like to thank you for your attention.